and welcome back to my channel Duct Tape Mechanic and to another episode of my series free on Facebook a series of videos in which I find things for free and I show you how to repair them repurpose them or recycle them in another manner in this video I got this newer style GE washer and it's not filling with water so I'm going to give you the two main reasons why your newer style GE washer may not be filling so if you find this video to be helpful Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more DIY and tinkering videos. Right here is a GE washer. This is their, I believe their one that connects to the Wi-Fi, the smart washer, quote unquote. But uh, this video will be applicable to pretty much any GE washer um, that's been purchased in the last 10 or so years. Um, these washers have a lot of problems and I've tackled a lot of them on my channel. So if you are having other issues, um, be sure to check those videos out as well. Um, to get started, I'm going to cover the first reason why your GE washer is not filling, and that's due to a faulty lid switch. Now, I've covered this repair in quite a lot of detail in my video called GE Washer Not Starting, but I'm going to show you another method to uh, replace it um, in this video. It could be a little bit easier, it could be a little bit difficult. It uh, depends on really um, how comfort comfortable you are sticking your hand um, into a washing machine pretty much. So we'll be covering that first and then we'll move on to the second main reason why your machine is not filling. Alright, these GE washers are notorious for having bad lid switch mechanism which pretty much causes the washer either to not start at all or it'll do a bit of a sensing then it won't fill up with any sort of water after that. Uh, like I said, I did cover that in another video and uh, the way I replaced it in that video is going to be different than this one. So if you um, need a little bit more detailed explanation, I'll link that video below. Um, but uh, the first thing we're going to have to do is kind of pry up this t piece right here. And this is really kind of fragile, brittle plastic. So just be careful. You work your way around. As you can see, I kind of already cracked it a little bit when I was uh, pre-gaming for this video. So... Please do be careful. That was actually the first time it happened to me on this washer, so I guess maybe I was just rushing a little bit. But we'll pop this up, then after that we'll disconnect the lid switch and then kind of pull it out that way. Like I said, this method does involve sticking your hand in kind of an uncomfortable position to get this out. So if you're not comfortable doing this, go ahead and watch my other video and I'll show you how to take this top up and that'll give you access to it and you'll be able to see everything clearly. All right, this is gonna put a knife and just kind of pry up on it here. Just pop out and uh, there we go. So the next step involves disconnecting the lid switch mechanism from the wiring harness. And here's where I was talking about, you gotta kind of stick your hand in there and feel around where you could feel the, the clip and kind of pull it off. I just disconnected it and you can see there's the connector right there. So, and so if you have really large hands, you may not be able to stick your hands down there. Um, but after that, it's been disconnected. The next thing we're going to do is kind of push down on this piece here and push to our left. If you're pushing down, we're kind of pushing to the left, and then we're going to stick our hand on this back side here and kind of grab it, prevent it from falling through. and. Just kind of pull it out. It is kind of a tight squeeze. There we go. And there's a lid lock mechanism on this. So what happens to um, these is, uh, as you can see, when the striker is a uh, come with lid switch uh, when the lid itself is closed the striker causes this mechanism to go this way and it should just pop back up like you saw on this one so this is a good one but on, on if yours is bad an easy way to tell is if you just manually push down on it and if it doesn't return automatically like that your lid switch is not closing properly therefore your washer thinks the lid is open and it'll never um, start your cycle or start adding the water um, so, like, like I said, this one is pretty good. This was perfect working condition. But if you push this down and it's slow or, or doesn't come up at all, I've seen this many times. And this is like $18 or $20 part on Amazon, and it's an easy thing to replace. 
All right. So if if your lid lock is the is the issue, uh, and you've ordered a new one, you just want to get your new one, and then pretty much go everything in reverse. So I'm going to be plugging this in to the connector right here. Then I'm going to be snapping it into place. Then putting that plastic clip on there. And hopefully yours isn't as busted up as mine. So there's that. Not That'll, that's it. Just click into place there. And then after that, we're just going to stick our hand down there and guide it in like so. You want this lip right here. It may uh, zoom in a little bit like so. And uh, I'll, I'll reposition the camera as well so you can see it a little better. Okay. So uh, you want this lip to be first, and then kind of push it like this, and you push to the right, it should click right in, like so. And that's how that's installed. Then you can just push that clip in as well. It should just pop in like that. Hopefully it's not cracked like that. But that's how you replace the lid lock mechanism, and that should resolve, I would say, 70% of the issues of your GE washer not filling or not starting. And for the other 20% or so, I'm going to show you how to check and replace the valves. Okay, to get to the valves, we need to get to the back of the machine. In this case, I'm just going to rotate the machine around. For you, you may have to be a little bit more creative than that. Okay, so pretty much if you purchase any sort of GE washer in the last 10 or so years, this is the back side it would look like. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off these two screws, that screw, and that screw right there to get access to the control panel and the valves and everything else. So after you got the screws out, you get this panel, kind of move it to the right, it should come right off. There may be a grounding clip right here, it looks like this one kind of came off, let me see. Um, I guess not on this one, but uh, typically there's a, there's a ground that's connected to the back, so you can just kind of clip that off, and we'll set that aside for now. Alright, so now we have access to the water valves. And so these things can fail for a couple of different reasons. They can fail due to mechanical failure or also electrical failure. Um, first thing you probably want to do is undo the water lines that are coming in here and see if, they're, if these valves are not clogged. Um, and then if they are, you'll just see, I don't know if they sell this filter separately, but uh, if, if it's, you know, if you can remove it and clean it out, that's probably a better alternative, but I don't know if that's possible. But a lot of the times, the particles have gone beyond that and mechanically uh, damaged the plunger. So that can be um, an issue there, or they just pretty much blocked up everything. And they can also fail electri electrically. So these solenoids right here can blow up. So I'm going to show you how to at least test it um, for electrical failure and for mechanical failure. I mean, you can really just look at the inlets and see how bad they are. Um, but other than that, um, there's nothing really you could you can't really open these up any further to check to see if there's a, any sort of mechanical failure but I will show you how to test them electric uh, electronically um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be removing this cover right here so just kind of flip this up and that'll get access to um, the connectors and also the screws to take it out all right so I'm going to show you how to test these um, for electrical failure. So basically these coils should have around 1.3 to 1.8 ohms of uh, resistance and uh, if they don't then most likely the coil itself is burned up or is in open circuit if it reads OL or if the resistance is too high that means there's also an issue with it. So with, when you have this many um, solenoids I recommend just taking a picture beforehand so you don't uh, switch up any of these um, connectors. 
for our sake. I believe this one just has a mechanical issue. So I'm just going to test one of these. I know the rest of them are good. So what we're going to do is uh, get your multimeter here and put it into resistance mode and uh, select kind of an auto resistance right there and put both leads onto the terminals. It doesn't matter if it's the red or the black and right there 1.6 kilo ohms. I believe I said 1.3 to 1.8 ohms. What I meant was 1.3 to 1.8 kilo ohms. So if that's um, yeah if your resistance is that low maybe these are an open circuit but if it's within the 1.3 to 1.8 ohm kilo ohm resistance measurement these are most likely electronically good and if you verify that across all the solenoids and you verify that the lid switch is good you there's a good chance that this valve has mechanically failed as well um, so I'm going to show you how to pop this out and replace that as next a lot of the times I should add that when the the, wash, the water lines haven't been changed for a while um, or if the machine's kind of getting on the older side you'll see a lot of calcium buildup inside these valves and the good thing about um, these newer washing machines I guess the one good thing is oftentimes um, uh, if there's an issue with flow the machine will go into kind of a flood mode and it's just continuing to drain unlike some of the older direct drive machines where if the water valve failed and let's say it failed in the open state it would just continue to uh, pump water into the machine and overflow into your house which can be a big issue anyways um, so once we've determined that it's an issue with the valve we're going to undo the screws here so you got one two and three I can just take this off the tripod and show you let's see so you got a quarter inch screw there another one there another one there and you should, obviously like I said you want to take a picture of this so you got blue white blue white here going from right to left and we're going to undo all of those electrical connectors then undo those three screws and uh, there's a little temperature sensor right down there as well and uh, we may be able to just lift this unit up and with a temperature sensor intact or we may need to come to the control board and unplug it first but uh, let's see what it looks like when we pull this unit up. Okay, so I've got the valve disconnected uh, from the connector and uh, unscrewed as well. So now I'm just kind of trying to pull up on it and uh, get them out that way. So this one's a little bit different than some of the other GEs where this whole assembly has the temperature sensor attached to it. This is a separate unit, I guess. So that's the temperature sensor, and we'll leave that be. But uh, basically, yeah, so we have the valves here, and uh, we were just gonna pretty much replace this whole unit, and to replace it is pr uh, all the steps pretty much in reverse. All right, so we're just gonna pop them back into the holes, and kind of push down on them. Make sure that everything is seated properly and then uh, use the three screws to uh, bolt it down. Okay, now that we got those nice and snug, we just put the connectors back in. We'll put the, the console back down, make sure that pressure hose is still connected, and then put the back cover back on. All right, that's it. So like I said, those two issues should solve a lot of the no-fill um, problem with this washing machine, but I will say that these machines are notorious for bad control boards as well. So if you try both of those things and it still doesn't work, unfortunately it could be a control board. But like I said, the, these two should resolve a lot of the issues. So if you found this video to be helpful, make sure you hit the thumbs up sign.